Hello, it's me. Um, happy Samhain. Um, I am uh, I'm in the forest. I've uh, been here for a little while. Listen really closely. You'll probably hear the trickle of a stream. It's really cool. It's making me happy. Uh, yeah, so I hope you're all well. Um, I'm recording this on the 31st of October. Uh, tomorrow is Samhain. Um, the first day of winter in uh, the old Celtic calendar. Um, the Day of the Dead and all of those other things. Which I'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, actually what I, what I want to talk about first is something I discovered the other day. So I, I was doing research on the old Celtic gods that were here, um, Gallic, actually. The, the Gauls are, are part of the Celtic genealogy, um, but they're the ones who, you know, mostly settled France, and then part of Spain, um, part of Italy, you know, et cetera. This, this whole area was called Gaul, um, you know, by the Romans. They just called it Gaul. That's not what they called themselves, necessarily. <laughs> But uh, the people who used to live here in this area, um, pretty much in between uh, the city of Metz in France and the city of Trier or Treves in uh, Germany, so including Luxembourg and all of that, uh, they were called the Treveri. Um, so actually that's how Trier gets its name because uh, the, the other word for it, and you'll hear people uh, in Luxembourg and in Germany, especially call it Trev. Um, that's, uh, you know, it was named after the people who were there. That was one of their uh, oppidums, as they're called, um, which was the, the Roman Latin word for uh, city, fort, village, settlement, etc. Um, there were other oppidums here as well. Um, but yeah, so all of this, and those are the indigenous people, as it were, here. Um, although, you know, like indigene in, the, in North America or in South America or anywhere else for that matter, you know, there have been several waves of indigenous people or people who are indigenous here um, before, the, uh, before the Roman civilization kind of conquered everything and then the Christians conquered them and then capitalism made us all... European and American and made us lose all of those other connections. Anyway, so the, uh, the, the, the Trevi, um, they had a lot of gods. Um, most of them are kind of, you know, we only have like one or two inscriptions about them. But then, you know, you, there's some Romans who, and some Greeks who, who, who wrote about them. But, you know, as I said, for the most part, it's the inscriptions that we have. Um, but anyway, so one of them, one of them, as soon as I saw the name, I was like, hmm, that's important. Uh, one of them is named Ratona. Um, Ratona is a goddess either of rivers or more precisely river crossing. Which is interesting because that, that any any of you you know listening watching this who who kind of have like you know who truck with gods as it were which I do um, and more and more and more these days I, when I just added a new god to my prayers in the morning and at night uh, Ratona um, so Ratona was a um, goddess of river crossing specifically of fords, fording. Um, the, you know, this whole area, the, the Moselle River kind of runs through all of this area from like Metz, Luxembourg, uh, Germany, you know, all of that. And, uh, you know, you, you would have to cross it uh, to get anywhere. You know, this is before bridges. It's interesting because there's, there's, uh, actually there's a couple of uh, fun Welsh connections there. You know, those who kind of know anything about uh, you know, Bronn, who is one of, I don't know if you'd call it a primary god, but a primary god of mine. Um, his name means raven, basically. 
Um, he's also a god of crossings, but a god of of bridges, but not exactly bridges. Um, alder pilings, as it were. Alder is a uh, is wood, uh, a tree um, that does really well in water because uh, it grows next to water. In fact, uh, most of these trees around behind me are alder, um, so you could you could lay down alder in a river, um, you know, and pile it basically, and and it would take a very long time for it to rot, and it was pretty strong. Uh, alder was also what uh, people used for shields um, because of its strength. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, there's kind of that relationship, like, you know, gods and goddesses of river crossings. Um, fun thing here. I'll tell you how I got my name. I think so. I think so. Because I, I mentioned that in the Aaron Rod video. Um, where I just had this dream um, where people were, uh, were, were saying what became my name, but I didn't know it was my name. And someone was like, hey, it's you. And I was like, that's not me. And she's like, oh, you don't know that yet. And it's what they call you later. Um, anyway, so this is kind of fun. And I just kind of, as soon as I read this, I was like, oh, okay. I understand. Um, so uh, the the same root um, of the first part of Ratona's name, uh, Rit, uh, is is actually from. Uh, it's the same root um, as uh, the Welsh word for river crossing, um, which is reed, by the way. So I was like, okay, hi, new goddess. Except one that I kind of realized, oh, I guess I've already sort of known lots about her from all of these other ones. And as I said, you know, she's kind of the goddess of the land. And I, I was thinking too, like, a lot of the, one of the stories about Rhine daughters, um, they all, uh, sorry, I'm checking on my bike. I put my bike up there. There's a tractor up there earlier. I had to wait a while for the tractor to go away. And I was like, oh, I hope it didn't run over my bike. I actually didn't check. I just decided to start doing the video. Now I'm looking, and it looks like my bike is fine. Where was I? Rhine Daughters. Rhine Daughters, yeah. So uh, the Moselle goes into the Rhine. So there's those weird connections. One river goes into another, and it's kind of the same river. The Moselle is the Rhine, but before. Or the Rhine is also the Moselle as it continues. And uh, the... You know, gods kind of do that, and stories sort of do that too. And all of the stories of like the Rhine daughters, which, you know, this stream. This stream is a Rhine daughter, which is to say it, it flows into the Rhine. It is one of the, you know, if the Rhine is the mother or the father, um, all of the streams that go into it are daughters. This right here is a Rhine daughter. All of the streams here are Rhine daughters. And, you know, uh, maybe Rhine granddaughters. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, they run into the Moselle. So maybe the Moselle is a Rhine's daughter. And, uh, and so these are their granddaughters. And it's interesting that you start from the end to the beginning. You know, not like this is the mother of the Rhine or the great grandmother of the Rhine or what have you, but it's, it's, it's daughter. Melusine. Melusina is potentially oh, there's some wild garlic somewhere nearby. It's wild garlic or wild onion. Oh, it's intense. It's been driving me nuts. I'm like kind of hungry now. Um, I think I'm sitting on it. Maybe no, I'm sitting on a bunch of money. We use. I'm gonna be so dirty when I go go back. That's okay. That's what happens when you droid stuff so um, yeah Lorelei uh, the Lorelei is, is another one so interestingly most of the stories about the Rhine daughters who are kind of nymphs as well uh, the Greeks would have called them nymphs um, they uh, were all about river crossings and not letting people cross whether that's continuing down the river or getting across it so you know, like the Lorelei with drowned sailors. Um, 
you know, there's all of these other stories where, yeah, it's this spirit who decides whether or not you get to go from one point to another through the river or across the river. Um, so Ratona would be grandmother, mother, Dawn of, of a lot of those myths. Yeah. Oh, so anyway, I was going to tell you, talk about the dead. Um, all right, it's a good time to do that. Saw one. I've been having all these really, hmm, how do you say this? Hmm, it's nice it's happening again. And it's usually a sign that I'm feeling pretty safe because I can't really let myself go too far or I haven't been able to let myself go very far into magical thinking. No, that's not the right word. Spirit thinking. I, thinking is not the right word. But, you know, I, I guess I haven't been allowed, I haven't been able to let myself go too far into that sort of existence, that sort of walking through the world for years because I, you know, I haven't been very rooted in place. And then I, you know, I had a lot of things that made me feel kind of insecure and unsafe and the reason why safety and security have a lot to do with that is I start acting weird when these things happen. Um, <laughs> I was uh, joking with my man today because, uh, man, what happened? He, oh, I spilled curry all over the place yesterday. Um, Turmeric is really hard to get out of things. Um, or kukuma, as they call it here. What else did I do? Oh, I was, uh, he's making lasagna tomorrow for his mother and, uh, I was like, oh, we still have some, some fresh lasagna pasta. And I got into the fridge and there was a bag of it, or like a package of it. And I was like, oh, cool, it's not even open. So I had it and I, I kind of turned away, away and it was open and they all go all over the place. And I didn't even notice at first. And then I hear him kind of laughing and I'm like, hmm, my potato city will um, I do more things like that when other things start happening. And it's not always okay to do that. It's not always okay to be in this sense of not being fully here. I mean, I am fully here, but not being fully practical? Is that the way to put it? I don't know. I used to tell people like, you know, if you're gonna like go meet the gods and make sure you've done all your laundry first, like fold and put it away because you're not gonna be able to fold and put away your laundry afterwards for a while, and then your laundry's gonna be everywhere. Um, or make sure your dishes are done before. Um, because it's, you know, it's uh, you get a little useless for things like that. Ah, my hair, hey. And uh, yeah, there's something else where I just like slipped and, and like almost fell, and he's like, yeah, this is cute. And I'm like, yeah, this is me when I'm getting creative creative inspired that's how I kind of say it but really it's like oh no there's you know the Wiccans kind of say oh the bill is thin around here right then bill then uh, that kind of works I guess I, uh, I tend to shy away from a lot of the Wiccan language because it's kind of hokey um, but uh, yeah so I keep waking up every morning and I'm just like you know, make my coffee in the morning, smoke a cigarette, just sort of just get on with the day. And then, like, have these little moments in the day where I remember that I was having a conversation with a dead druid. Um, and it happened again today. Or it's like, oh, yeah, except that it's been multiple druids. Like, I'm having lots of conversations with dead druids, but I don't know where those conversations are happening. They're not exactly happening in dream. I think they're happening when I'm awake, but then like there's some other part of me that's doing it. Um, which, well, it was a sign that, you know, I feel safe and secure to be able to have those experiences and not kind of throw those away or push them down or just shrug them off. It's like now I can pay attention to that. And one of the conversations I was having was like trying to explain how things are done now. And the steward was like, yeah, but that doesn't work. I was like, yeah, well, no, I mean, but that's, that's, you know, the old ways don't work anymore. That's why we had to change it to make it this way. And he's like, no, we, 
Oh, we tried that too. That's not gonna work. You know it already. I like it. I do. This kind of looks like a bow, but those are made of ash. Usually not of. What is this? Eighty-five percent chance that it's alder. It's wet. It's been in water. Yeah, that yeah, is. Anyway, so having conversations with dead druids and meeting a new god that I already knew that is somehow related to my name. This stuff is fun. It's interesting though, that conversation where I was trying to explain, no, this is how we do things now. It was this weird sense where it was like, it was like I wasn't even defending, I wasn't defending like television or smartphones or something. I was defending something about politics, I think. And it was like, no, that, that's not going to work. We tried it. You know that. I was like, no, 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 we're right. We're right. I think we're wrong. Um, I don't even remember specifically what it was, but I have a feeling of what it was. And it was like, oh, that's an uncomfortable thought. So yeah, the wheel turns tomorrow. We go into the dark days. We've already started in the dark days. France, Germany, and Belgium in this whole area have all gone in lockdown. France for four weeks again, where you can't really leave the house to do much at all. Um, and uh, Luxembourg is not yet, although we, I read today that it's the third highest. Oh, hi. Sorry. Uh, third highest infection rate in the world per capita, etc. Well, that's pretty intense. It's safer to be here in the woods. The same way, like in France, like be in the woods, or in Germany, be in the woods, or in Belgium, be in the woods. Um, when I was reading about the new intense explosion of infections everywhere, it's like no one in charge um, <laughs> um where it was kind of like you 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 kind of you don't have any droids anymore yeah, that's what I mean there's really no one who no group of people who can say hey we read the signs and we had the dreams and we laid inside of dark stone tombs for nights and nights to try to find wisdom, and this is what we found. So therefore, we need to kill the king, or we need to move the Alpadon to another place, or we need to fight off these people who are invading and trying to enslave us, or we need to make more sacrifices to this, or whatever. There's no one to tell us those things. Instead, all we have are ministers of health and sciences and, and, and professors and all of these specialists who their job is to kind of understand one specific thing, but then they're all fully at a loss on what to do. And it's really chaotic. And I want to say it's anarchic in that there's never a center. It's interesting. One one complication that I've, and I think this is kind of part of one of the you know, that, that conversation with the Druid. The, you know, the problem with like, anarchism is great, but usually all it ever really is is decentralized power, um, with no center to kind of coordinate things. Not that you need like authoritarian center down, but like there's no there's no council. There's no group that kind of takes all of the things together and says, oh, this is, this is what we're seeing, you know, 
and that's kind of how all of the governments are working right now. Um, you know, I guess they're kind of doing their best. Some, I mean, I don't think the American one is at all. But, um, but even even in Europe, you know, the, like I said, the French shut down. And, like they kind of think this will work, but maybe it won't. I guess, I don't know, we'll figure it out, we'll cross those rivers and get to them, as it were. I love you all, um, happy Samhain, uh, or happy Beltan if you're in the south, I think there's a couple of you watching who are in, uh, in Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea, I think, so, yeah, um, Happy Beltane, and happy Samhain, and uh, be safe and well. I'm going to show you that on the street one more time. Love you all.